Good morning, this is Pastor Jim Cimbala, and it's lunes, Monday, July the 6th. How was your 4th of July weekend? I hope you stayed away from those explosive devices. You know, when I was a kid, they had little firecrackers this long. Now, trucks have to bring in the, the stuff they're lighting up. Very dangerous. Hope you're well. You know, someone sent me, I just want to cover this before we get to the Ten Commandments. Someone sent me an email and said, you know, you re I'm so glad you told me you tape at five at a time. And that's why you have the same shirt on every day because we were wondering, like, like, Get a wardrobe, dude, because that same shirt every day is getting a little old. You can't carol, like, accent something here or do something. So now you get it. I do five at a time, so you're stuck with this. It is what it is. What you see is what you get. So now we're in Exodus chapter 20, and we're going to read the first six verses. Exodus 20, the first six verses. And now we are in the territory of what is called the Ten Words. The Ten Words. The Ten Commandments are called the Ten Words, uh, literally in the Hebrew. And God spoke all these words. Verse 2. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Numero uno. Number two, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. And that word jealous, because it has a bad meaning to us today, like avoid jealousy, New Testament tells us. It could also be translated zealous. In other words, when I love you and come into this relationship, don't cheat on me. Don't cheat on me. No one wants to be cheated on. Don't have other lovers. It's actually the word that's used uh, for a person who's married and leaves his first wife while he's still married and starts messing around with another woman. I'm a zealous God. Punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. So those are the first two commandments, and let's look at them together. Notice God says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. So that means two things, ownership and instilling trust in us. You wouldn't exist if it wasn't for me as a nation. So now I'm over you. Do, I'm your master. Do what I ask. But in case that sounds dictatorial to you, since I brought you out of Egypt, and showed my love for you. These commandments are tender commandments. I had a late friend who wrote a book, Tender Commandments, T-E-N, then apostrophe, a bracket, I should say, D-E-R, close bracket, Tender Commandments. In other words, these are for your good. I'm not laying a burden on you like, oh, now I'll never have fun. No, these are loving commandments. <clears throat> and the first one that he gives is... The commandment of no other gods before me, as I said. But as we read through these commandments, once again, we have to have in front of our eyes the fact of we don't live under this covenant. Listen to Hebrews 8, verse 6. But in fact, the ministry Jesus has received is as superior to theirs, the priests, as the covenant of which he is the mediator is superior to the old covenant, the old one, the one we're reading. Since the new covenant is established on better promises, there you go, commands characterize the old covenant, promises characterize the New Testament. The Old Testament says, obey and you'll live. The new co covenant says, believe and you will live. Comprende, no comprende. That's a big difference. So listen, the days, for there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, 
No place would have been sought for another. But God found fault with the people and said, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors, what we're reading. Oh, I wish someone would have told me that when I was growing up in church. When I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, no, this one is going to be, I'm going to put a new law in their hearts. I'm going to give them a new mind, a new spirit. So now, these commandments now have to be looked at, which still apply to us. And we're going to read all kinds of commandments. And every one of them, God told Moses, tell the people, you must obey all of them. Not some of them, not just the Ten Commandments, all the commandments. So, Okay, Pasa, what's happening? What do we make of this? Well, the first commandment is definitely repeated in the New Testament. That is, you have no other gods before me. Literally, it means to my face in the Hebrew. In other words, it's used, as I said, of taking a second waff while the first one is still alive. So God is jealous. Don't cheat on me and love someone more than me because I love you with all my being. Doesn't that make sense to us? How, how would a girl feel? She gets married and our third wedding anniversary, she makes this meal for her husband and he calls her and says, honey, can't come home. I met this girl named Doris and we're gonna hang out in a bar. We're gonna go to a club because she's really interesting. We're talking broken heart. We're talking tears. That's how God is when we love someone more than him. And that includes family. That includes pleasure, money, anything that we love more than him. Let's combine that with the second commandment, which says you shall not make for yourselves an image Graven, don't make him of a bird. I'm not a bird. Don't make him of a reptile. Don't make him of anything. No graven images, no idols are permitted. No physical representation of God was permitted. And that applies to us today. Why? Because nothing that we could make represents the awesome God that we serve. How could, how could a person, an artist, a uh, uh, someone, an artist, really gifted, a sculptor. How could anybody make something that represents the God who fills the whole universe? Stop. That's impossible. Also, with God, there is no locality. You can't put God in a location and give him a material substance being. And the, every idol is like, you know, when they made an idol, after they got through, they had to set it up. And if it toppled over, like, yo, please pick up your idol. Your God just fell. God said, no, do not imitate the Canaanites. They have these graven images. I detest them. And we're going to see how Israel, even after hearing that, went right back and worshiped the idols of the people in Canaan, even though God had told them, don't do it. So God does not permit any kind of representation. They're all inadequate. You can't localize him and materialize him. By the way, 1 John, at the very end of 1 John, John, it says, little children, keep yourself from idols. You know, modern day idols, money, pleasure, a house, a car. Oh, I met people and once in college. I had a guy who lived on my floor. He was in love with his car. He got a new car. No, in love. Like, I think they went out on dates together. That's all he talked about, he lived for. That's how material things can get into us. Keep yourself from idols. God, even if it's not a material idol, don't let anything in our heart get between us and God. He deserves all of our love, amen? So be it, God bless you.